स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Look at first the steam engines. The first one we saw already with Henry Giffard. But uh, steam engine basically, can someone help me? What do you mean by steam engine? What is a steam engine? It uses steam as the fluid for doing mechanical work. So what is so special in steam so that it can be used to do mechanical work? Why is steam a preferred fluid for doing mechanical work in an automotive engine, a locomotive engine sorry. That is right, that is right. The capacity to hold heat in a given amount of volume is very high for steam. That is the main reason. You must have heard or read about latent heat of steam, correct. The amount of energy it can absorb for before undergoing a phase change or to undergo a phase change. So, steam is a fluid that can retain a large amount of heat. Secondly, steam can be easily created by heating water which is easily available. So, these are the two motivating factors which led to the steam engine and if steam engine is available, they also use it for the airship. Okay. So, this is a small video of the working of a steam engine. Okay. So, what you do is you basically pass steam from the inlet and that steam goes into a chamber. So, now you can see there is a crankshaft and that crankshaft is being moved up and down by a sequence of inlets and outlets containing steam. So, there are three chambers here. In all three chambers, what is happening is basically a reciprocating piston is being moved by steam. But the temperature of the steam is slowly reducing as it does work. So, you may not be able to recover in a small space the entire energy that a steam engine can produce. So, therefore, you do it in stages. Okay. And then finally, there is an outlet which throws out the steam. Such engines as you all know are very popular in uh, locomotives and a very compact version of steam engines were used in the past to propel airships also. Okay. So, the same engine, the same steam engine that goes into ships when made compacted, maybe less power but compacted is used in steam engines for airships and uh, inside steam engines also there are various subsystems. What we saw just now is the reciprocating engine. So, steam is used for a reciprocating piston. You could also have main motors where there are some cup like things which move, rotate because of the flow of high speed steam. You can also put a turbine and make the turbine move by impinging steam into it. All of them have their pluses and minuses. But what I would like to um, show, share with you is a, a very interesting uh, experiment done around 12 years ago, around 12 years ago, 2003 if I remember rightly. Uh, there were some people experimenting with bringing back steam for powering LTA systems. Now, why on earth do you think people would like to look at steam as a LTA system in this today's generation? What do you think is the motivation? Now, this particular, uh, this particular experiment that I will show you, it is not that much to provide propulsive power for the 
for the engine. This is an attempt to use steam as a lifting gas. Okay. And what would be the motivation? The high cost of helium and more than high cost, the continuous less availability. So, recently we put a proposal to an agency for funding application of LTS systems for the farmers, agricultural applications. So, one question that was raised is how do you think farmers will be able to afford? Helium is out of question, availability is also a problem. Hydrogen, yes, it is relatively cheaper, but still operating cost can be very high. So, someone said, uh, can we use steam as a lifting gas? So, through that, so I want to just showcase this thing to you. Okay, looks like I will have to, or I have this information offline, so I will probably be able to, uh, no, but you know, it was, it was nice to see it there. So, this website I would like you to study in detail when you go back home. It is called as the flying kettle. Okay. And uh, basically, steam balloons and steam airships. It is called as flyingkettle.com. So, the idea is to use steam for balloons and airships. So, let us see a testing of their. We actually got it up, folks. Okay. What I will try to do is I will try to put the video with audio also. I do not know which of these cables will work. We actually got it up, folks. Well, it actually stands, folks, but not very well. Stable now, it was quite difficult. Several equipment failures. This is a very special purpose material called as hideous, which is able to withstand steam at 100 degrees centigrade. It is able to hold it, hold it without structural problems, without leakage. Okay. So, similarly, these people are also, and uh, if you notice, this, there is this steam engine here, this is a small steam engine which generates steam steam generator I would say, I should say. So, steam turbine engines very, very high power to weight ratio and that is their principal attraction. The power available versus the weight of the system is very high, but they are not very straightforward to operate. They are complex, expensive and require a lot of maintenance. Okay. Secondly, you need very high RPMs, therefore you need a very heavy gear box. Because the engine will produce high RPM and to reduce it down to the propeller RPM, you need to put a heavy gear box. So, a better option would be to either use a reciprocating steam engine or a vein motor. Now, this argument was for steam turbines. So, steam turbines are very commonly used and they are usually available, but the argument being made here is that steam turbines are not going to be useful because they are going to be very, very heavy and they are not going to be as effective. So, this is the best suggestion reciprocating, reciprocating steam engines or rain motors, they should be used. Okay, let us go to IC engines which are very common. So, essentially an IC engine is one that uses an oxidizer which is mostly air and that is combusted inside a combustion chamber and that produces the required energy for the mechanical work. Okay. So, <coughs> you can see the functioning of the IC engine as shown here. 
in this small video. So you can see that the piston gets compressed and then there is an explosion. In the explosion there is an expansion of the gas which pushes the piston down. As the piston is pushed down air is sucked in okay. and then this cycle continues. The valves are closed, air is compressed, compressed air is exhaust is combusted, it causes an expansion. The gas is expelled here, the air is inhaled here. So, is this a two stroke engine or a four stroke engine? So, how many of you say it is a two stroke engine? Why do you say it is a two stroke engine? Yes, but do not you have four separate steps? Hmm. The triangular cam. Okay. Now, here is a picture of a piston engine which has been used for the R101 airship. Remember the airship which basically did not succeed, which was supposed to come to India from London, from, from UK. So, they had designed a very special, very narrowish propel, um, piston prop engine for powering this particular airship. What you see here is the hub where the prop will be mounted. And uh, this is the this is the IC engine of a modern airship. What you see is the framework of the airship. So this is the semi-rigid airship with from framework inside, and then we are mounted. So let us have a look at this particular uh, concept. This particular uh, airship is called as Aeroscraft. So, Aeroscraft is uh, one of the modern designs. In fact, I would like to cover this uh, in more detail when I look at modern airships. So, let us move ahead. Now, about IC engine, we have to be very careful about the kind of fuel we use. So, it is very important. In airships, predominantly we use diesel engine IC uh, and some older versions use gasoline. So, now what is the basic limitation or a problem with a diesel engine as compared to a gasoline fired engine? Hmm, what is it? Maintenance is more or less in diesel. Why is it more? Correct. The operating pressure is higher and therefore the vibration levels are also higher. So therefore even cars also, the diesel cars, once they go beyond around 35,000 kilometers and when they go for maintenance, there is a sudden increase in the maintenance costs. Till that particular distance or till the engine is touched, they might be efficient, they might be low in operation cost. Okay. So some older versions are using gasoline. Germans as you all know have also used this blau gas. Do you remember this blau gas? It was asked in the exam also. And this particular uh, gas was used in the zeppelins. Okay. So just to remind your, refresh your memory, we know that one of our challenges is to maintain the buoyancy. And this gets disturbed because of the loss of mass as the fuel is consumed. So, the Germans came up with this secret weapon called blau gas, which is similar to weight in the air as air. So, its consumption during flight did not significantly change the balance of the airship. So, it is a low density fuel, density matching with that of air. Chemically, it is same as the coal gas and it is not blue in color, it is called blau gas because of this gentleman who discovered this particular gas. Right. 
and uh, the first airship to use blow gas was the Graf Zeppelin LZ127. The volumes required were very large and therefore it is very handy, it is very handy to have uh, a gas like this which does not upset the buoyancy of the airship. 